La Palabra is a workshop that will explore the idea of creationness and the female creative principle. We will work to stitch together the song of our body, creating ourselves anew through the lens of the written and spoken word. And it is important to note that this workshop is available to all who are interested. Uh, participants, no matter gender, age, ethnicity, class, or creed. Thought Woman. Thought Woman created tortillas and flesh like masa. And perhaps she thought of violence too, but I will never know. She thought of the sex of me, all apple and dew, stitched a burlap body, brown of course, and blue sand into it. This to be the me of me. My insides tierra and just a drop of moisture. She took four long ropes of her hair, onyx like Moctezuma's eyes, and threaded the burlap girl boy body. She named me Desert. She named me Una Esperanza de las Estrellas. She named me Xylonin. Thought Woman sang me into this world to let me cry, to bleed, give babies to this land, invoke dream stories, to inscribe the world with my something. My something is bone song, is holler woman, is thin finger, and toes the hue of a waterless dirt. When the sun woke, I was young, closer to the earth than hair to my waist. By the midwinter of day, I had peeled a baby from my womb, shorn my scalp and grew rivers on my belly. When the inevitable ink of night comes, I will unbind my stitches, let the sand run back home, give back this hair to Thought Woman, so she may daughter someone new. articulations, 
dancing a life, bone woman, chanting structure into Teitsinaka vows. She slips on the magic ring, wedding eternity. Thought, wedding, tongue, sound, softness, singing incantations of love, forming the doorway to paradox, bone woman, wedding eternity. My mouth is much too large, too much misunderstood. I do not resent my lips. As a skeleton of plums, my mouth is an adopted graveyard, unaccustomed to the remainder of me. I speak a toothy jangle of breath. My mouth is large and wrangled around my father's dimple. My hair is falling out. Cascade of webs and surrender, I am entangled, an accidental ponytail around my wrist, and I am failing myself. My eyes are not my mother's. They no longer trust me. My eyes that do not daydream or stutter regard my hair as broomstick lace, my mouth as preservation, my tongue a clam. My mouth is an imposter, a betrayal of food and language, but I do not resent my lips. They are pair halves and solitude, juice dripping silence. Mask for desire or corruption, I find freedom in suckling smoke, but there is not freedom or liberty elsewhere. My hair, my mouth, my eyes, hand-held slaves of illness. I cannot rescue myself away from my body, my captor. I've swept my hair into a pile, cluttered and ragged as if sleeping. I kicked my hair down the stairs into a medicine ball of what used to be me. The wind took it. As water takes skipping stones, annexed my hair to a collection of tumbleweeds. Greg and Darnell laugh in the corner. I do all the toilet scrubbing in my house, he says loud enough to Darnell. Both are grinning at me. I ask students, who cleans the toilets of the world? Is that on the test? Has not been asked. <laughs> the yelling man hasn't yelled for days now that he knows how to read a poem. He's got it. Good as CPR. Darnell caps his hand over his smile. Greg's eyes are twinkling. He is Hopi Taos, interjects the indigenous way as often as he can. His age demands respect. Students face him with attention. Versions of brown, hair dark. Greg stays after class to tell me his problems with thumb drives, his neck surgery, his colonoscopy. My height, he says, comes from part Navajo. Darnell is interested in Dudley Randall's Ballad of Birmingham, and all 19 have come to the edge of good writing, the brink, but sloppy copy doesn't fly. I am building steam like an old train engine, like a big-winged bird. Charles, with coal-colored eyes, fights me on not understanding, while three others swarm my desk. Charles is part of Sherman Alexie's Behind the Wall Club. Their faces turn into the circle. Sometimes I let them all face me. It's harder that way. I take more heat. The emergency driver has five daughters. He limits his extensions of self. The pro golfer is nervous about dictums and being right. The tall blue-eyed guy has a wife in a wheelchair and three kids at home. He is yelling man, but happier now after grappling with Martine Espada. Three little feminists sit up front, faces up like tulips, chiming all of them themselves. I do not attach. Face, Kara. These fragments I have shored against my ruins. T.S. Eliot. In somberness, the face unfolds into fragments, shored against the ruin from abuses, allowed because that is the way it is. 
head down in shame and giving up in this is enough. From watching mother suffer, from watching grandma suffer, from a cycle of fear, see her fate. With wisdom cut a new path from umbilical cord to umbilical cord, let the silical ruin unfold. Daughter doesn't need abuse, doesn't see abuse, doesn't hear abuse, her face uplifted in youthful triumph. Four faces, four generations of women merge inside. Reflect stories back, one mirror, clarity, art, verse, love. Praise the beauty of daughter's face. Forgiveness flows, unfold abuse as she folds like silk in origami. In some beautiful modern dance, the ruin of ancestral faces emerge as whole. Thank you. Backstage, I sat between Jive Poetic and a woman. Jive, a very tall, svelte black man, was upset and letting her know. She, being Texan, didn't take too kindly to a black man stepping up on her. But this is not a poem about race relations. No, this is a poem that ducks issues about race, weaves around gender relations, even blocks issues of regional pride and jabs at my body in constant flow. This body seems a little different every day. And as I watch the slow addition of gray hair crawl across my chest, I know I'm not the same person mentally, emotionally, or physically as I was at 18. So it was with a huge degree of skepticism that one of my doctors suggested I try and get back to the weight I was when I graduated from high school, I queried, really? <laughs> he cited some statistic about how most people are fully developed at 18 and their weight then is ideal. My body has never been a statistic, and I wasn't one at 18. At 18, I was the height I am now, but weighed about 40 pounds less. Yes, in the almost 30 years since I graduated, I've added 40 pounds, about one and a third pound a year. But most of that weight was added in my 30s. My, when my weight would rocket up during late fall and winter, then drop as spring turned into summer. As my 40s approached, it no longer dropped. And my weight hovered at where it is right now. So in a sense, my weight now is not in constant flow. But the hair that covers my chest keeps crawling, such that I no longer have a trail to the goodies, but a mat, a carpet, that seems to spread out like some slowly evolving bowl and doily spider web. And hairs that would range from brown to red now contain a smattering of gray as well. I don't think I'm a big man. Yet I often chide my lover when she cooks to double the recipe. Because the measurements don't seem to fill this beast of a machine. For more than just a little bit. I find myself eating, eating two meals to her one. And sneaking away to recharge. I'm not starving, but have the appetite for more. Always more. So when Jive looked down at me, I think he and his anger might have thought, if this guy really puts his weight into some blow, it's going to hurt. And he stepped back, took a deep breath, and used his words, <laughs> not his body. Thank you.